Ja, hallo, wir sind hier heute mit Joel Hernandez zusammen. Er spricht auf der diesjährigen Gesunden Gemeindekonferenz. Und äh, wir haben ihn eingeladen, sich kurz vorzustellen und ein paar Fragen zu beantworten, damit wir ein bisschen verstehen, was äh, wir zu erwarten haben. Hello, Joel. Can you please introduce yourself very quickly? Well, hello. Uh, I'm delighted to, to be here and greet you. My name is Joel Hernandez. Um, I was born and raised in Mexico. I'm a missionary kid. My parents um, planted churches and spread the gospel there in Mexico for many years. And um, and so I grew up seeing the, the transformation of uh, in the lives of people who were highly impacted by the gospel and um, and their yeah, their lives, their communities were transformed. Um, I studied in Emmaus Bible College in the United States and also at Dallas Seminary. Uh, my wife, uh, Amy, is, is an American. Together, we serve the Lord also in Mexico, planting churches. And um, for about eight years, eight or nine years, we, we were in central Mexico. We have one daughter. Um, her name is Sarah, and she uh, is also married. She's married and has three three uh, little ones, our grandchildren. Uh, for the last uh, year or so, I've been uh, devoting my time in two organizations, Christian Missions in Many Lands, which is uh, a mission organization that oversees and supports, um, gives services to many missionaries around the world, and also OPAL, uh, Overseas Publishing and Literature, or an organization that resources Uh, countries that are developing with good evangelical literature. So that's a little bit of uh, our, an introduction, and I'm delighted to greet you. Thank you. That's great. Um, yeah, the conference this year, the title of the conference is Believing Healthy. And I would like to ask you, what do you think is the most unhealthy thing or problem with today's believers or churches? Yeah. That's a profound question, and really one could go in so many different ways to answer that. But one of the one of the thoughts that keeps coming back to my mind is is this um, subject of uh, gospel optimism, uh, gospel optimism. That is a belief that that God is powerful to work through his word, through his spirit, and through the message of the gospel. Um, we, we, um, we live in a day where we look back and see, wow, God did wonderful things in the 1800s, or maybe 70 years ago, God did wonderful things, but now things look very bleak and very bad. And, and, uh, and yet it's the same God and it's the same message and the same power of God and the same spirit. And so uh, I see that unhealthy thinking um, is thinking that is not, that, that does not recognize the power um, of God unto salvation that is represented according to Paul in, in Romans 1 in the gospel. So um, yeah, that would be that would be my number one answer to that question. Yeah, this is so true. We all need uh, this gospel optimism in our lives. And I'm certainly looking forward to uh, hearing uh, you talking a little bit more about that. Um, second question, Joel, um, who especially would you like to grow into a more healthy way of believing? Is there a group or certain um, people you think of? Well, when it comes to the gospel, uh, I, I can hardly think that anybody would be excluded from from uh, coming to realize and be gripped by this idea. Uh, but but first of all, it would be leaders, um, elders, deacons, leadership, uh, ministry leaders that um, that must serve others. In, in ways that either believe great things that that God can do and will do in their lives or have a pessimism about about 
the church, about people, about our day, about, you know, the responsiveness of, of our world to the message of the gospel. So it really is for older, older generations and younger generations, for people who are in leadership, people who are discipling others. And that means parents, mothers, um, you know, older believers. Uh, I, I think that this is the kind of, of a uh, message that would um, strike a chord in in every every person, but especially especially leaders. Yeah, oh, that's great. Um, Joel, uh, I'd like to ask you maybe a little bit of uh, kind of a personal question, but um, when you come to Germany and 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 talk about a healthy way of believing. Uh, may I ask you, have you experienced an un unhealthy form of believing yourself? And how so or why not? And uh, if, how did you grow healthy? Yeah. Well, of course, I think um, we've perhaps all encountered uh, along the way in our Christian life, people who um, maybe don't, don't, necessarily think they 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 believe this way but certainly express it in a way that speaks about the past as the glory days uh the wonderful things that god ever did with us were all a generation or two ago and 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 so i i think no god wants to do great things in this generation and um and and he wants to show the exceeding riches of his grace to our generation and to successive generations. And so uh, I experienced this when I first landed in Mexico uh, as a missionary. And uh, and we arrived at an area of Mexico that some thought was very, very hard and opposed to the gospel. And so people would say to me, well, why, why have you become a missionary in Satan's throne room? Uh, that's what they call the city because of its past, its its religious hardness, its um, militancy against uh, Christians, and uh, and people would say, "Oh, those people are very hard." And uh, people there themselves said, "You know that that message you have is interesting, but we are, you know, we are a very in one village." They told me we were a very cursed people. And um, and I think, well, wonderful. That's that's the kind of people God wants to reach. And uh, you know, the the doctor goes to people who are sick, not to the healthy. And God justifies the ungodly, according to Paul in Romans five. And so, I, I think that um, that I, I met that in in at times, I came to believe that I thought, well, maybe this is an impossible task and what am I doing here maybe I should go to other places where where people are more responsive and and subtly subtly believing um that it's all up to me and um yeah and God is not powerful enough to do what he has promised to do and so yeah that, that I've seen that in my life and not just there but in other times as well hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I can totally relate with that. Um, uh, to me, it, uh, um, sometimes I think uh, for for certain Christians, all the like heroes of the of of believing or faith heroes are long dead and with the Lord, and uh, we have only like uh, black and white photographs of them. But actually, uh, we live in this generation we live now, and I think, um, yeah. yes, uh, the Lord is uh, doing great things, deeds amongst us, and um, he's powerful. And so, again, I'm very um, much looking forward to hearing you about that uh, a little bit more. Last question, Joel. In your opinion, what's the best outcome Um for someone um, who would come to uh, the conference. So imagine someone uh, uh, traveling to Wetzlar, um, uh, spending some time, spending some money to go there. So uh, what do you think? What is the best thing he can, he or she could learn or process or um, even change in, in their thinking or in, in, in their believing? Yeah, yeah so 
in my thinking, uh, an encounter with God's word should always be transformational. Um, God is hoping to shape us to change our direction uh, in when we meet him, when we meet, when we encounter his word. And so for me, um, a message, uh, a message like the ones we will have during our weekend together are not about just adding information, not just about um, you know, meeting somebody that we didn't know before or hearing something new, but really it's about, it's about focusing on what God wants for us and, and changing the things that the perspective that we have. And so, um, I, I think that's the most powerful outcome that we could have when we come to the word of God. And obviously, um, I, I, I am very involved in organizing conferences, uh, some in the Hispanic world and some international ones, some in the U.S. And I'm a big believer in conferences because God has met me so many times in at, at conference times, sometimes in conversation with other people that were in attendance. And we just heard each other's story. We met them and I saw what God did in their lives. And maybe we decide to keep in touch or network or do something. But, you know, interestingly enough, sometimes as I'm, as the conference meeting is done and the songs have finished and the prayers and, and I go and, and, and reflect upon what I've heard, um, God's work continues to, to inform me and to, and to uh, give me an idea or correct the thinking. And so I find that that God um, encounters people at conferences. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, you might be thinking, Ooh, how much am I going to spend? How much is this going to cost? But you can't put a price tag on, on God's work and the transformation. And I'm not saying that for myself, but I'm saying it for, for those who will be uh, coming. I think it's a, a powerful moment to experience God and to think about what he wants and how to uh, move forward in him. Yeah, I think this is so true. I just um, was in Wetzlar in, this, in the very same city on, on a, a theology conference last week with Tom Schreiner, and it was very powerful. And um, I, I learned a lot, but not only... Um, um uh, information but also um from the character from uh, from from the uh, from the uh, um how um this teacher uh, presented god's word and and we really encountered that god's word spoken to a congregation or to a uh, to a group of people who are there to to receive god's word is so so powerful and yeah, we are so much looking forward to um, meeting brothers and sisters from all over Germany and mm -hmm. to meeting you there in, in Wetzlar. And yeah, Joel, thanks so much. We will continue praying for you and for your family. And we are very glad um, to see you in Germany at the conference. And we are very keen to hear more about how to believe in a healthy way and be transformed by the good and powerful word of, of um, our holy God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I'm very excited about uh, being there with you, uh, with you all, and uh, experiencing God together in, in community. And um, yeah, I, I hope to see you all very soon. So you are right now at the conference in the States. Am I right? <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm at a conference called the Missions Orientation uh, Program, and uh, it's something that two mission organizations have come together, uh, partnering to encourage people that are either already on the mission field or uh, getting ready to go to the mission field. And so we have a group of people here. Uh, there's a session going on okay. right now, and uh, it's just been a very powerful time. Wow, yeah. how important. Wow. Okay, Joel, thanks very much. Um, see you soon, and um, thanks again for the time you took. Thank you very much. Praying for you all, and hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.